Hi, this is Mr. Leo, and in this video, we're going to talk about how you can use Zoom and Jamboard to collaborate in real time. The example I'm going to share is an example where the teacher has set up a Zoom video conference and is utilizing Jamboard as a collaborative whiteboard for the teacher and the student to both draw on the screen simultaneously. So let's take a look at Google Classroom. <clears throat> if we go to the Classwork page, you can see the teacher has set up a Jamboard assignment. We're going to click on this, and we're going to view the assignment to open it up. This is another instance where there's nothing necessarily to turn in, uh, but the student would want to click mark as done when this is over, just to let the teacher know that they've completed this activity. We're going to launch Zoom first. We're going to open up those Zoom meetings. And you can see that the uh, that Zoom is now set up in its own floating window. Bear with me just one second. I lost the rest of my screen. Takes a little bit to uh, manipulate the windows. So one of the things you want to consider doing is having uh, one window off to the side and then having your Zoom meeting side by side. And if you just arrange those by minimizing, if, it, if your Zoom takes up the full screen like this, you can click the icon in the middle to, to uh, um, minimize it slightly, or you can manually do it by manipulating the, uh, the borders of it. I'm just gonna move this to the side. And then the rest of the instruction said to open up Jamboard. So I'm going to click on Mr. Leo Order of Operations Google Jamboard. And if we were in a true video conference, you'd see the teacher, you'd see the student, and, and both would be on screen simultaneously. So in this instance, the teacher has shared a jam with students. And it, again, it's a collaborative whiteboard. Um, the teacher has provided some instruction. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is the order of operations. That's parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, then subtraction. And the teacher has provided a model. So perhaps the student and the teacher could collaborate together uh, to work on something like this. You don't know this, but I actually have two screens open simultaneously. And on my second screen, I'll, I'll be in the role of teacher, and on the first screen, I'll be in the role of student. So what I'm gonna do here on the uh, teacher screen, just so you can see it, is I'm gonna grab the pen tool, and I'm going to select um, a red color, and I'm just gonna draw a smiley face on the screen. And you should see that reflected on the student view. It may lag slightly, but you should see it on the student screen as well. There it is coming in. I'm using a mouse and I'm not doing a very good job of it, but you can see that I was able to draw something on the screen that looks like a circle. Um, I was trying to actually draw a smiley face. I don't have a touch screen, so I'm just using a regular mouse, but I think you get the idea. So instructions have been provided. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I would assume that the teacher and the student would talk together about how this problem is solved. And here's the example, because you wanna do your, um, your, your parentheses and exponents first, you're looking at what the teacher or what the model has done here, three times five squared divided by 15 minus five minus two squared. And what they've done first here is three times, they've done the exponent 25 divided by 15 and five, they've done the exponent minus four. So if we continue, you can see the example three times 25 divided by 15 minus um, five minus four has been repeated. If we do what's in the parentheses first, multiplication before division, we have 75 divided by 15 minus one. We have 75 divided by 15 minus one. I don't know why that's repeated. We have five minus one and the answer is four. Well, the teacher set up more than one page here. So if we scroll to the next page, the student can have some time to practice independently. And I'm just gonna move this over so you can see a little bit better. But again, the teacher and the student can just talk to each other because they're on Zoom together. There really isn't much need for Zoom at this point because you're sharing the whiteboard. So what the teacher might then do is task the student with demonstrating what they've learned. In this case, you have a pen, an eraser, a select tool, um, a sticky note tool, an image tool, and a laser pointer. So if the teacher wants to point something out, they can kind of point on the screen and the laser will eventually disappear. Um, the teacher may expect the student to then practice. And if you grab the pen tool, you can see there's a pen, a marker, a highlighter, and a paintbrush. I I'm, I'm happen to be showing a math equation, which you could use this in a variety of subject areas. Uh, the teacher might then instruct the student to select a color, and then from there, the student would go about uh, solving the equation collaboratively with the teacher. And as we know from my dear Aunt Sally, we wanna do parentheses first, 
And on a touch screen, this would be much easier. Looks like we have two times three. So the student might draw this again. Again, I'm just using the mouse. Six divided by two. And again, I apologize for the poor handwriting here. Again, I'm using a mouse times three. So it looks like two times three is six. So six divided by six equals one. And again, horrible job with the handwriting with the mouse, but a touch screen, I would assume this would be much more effective. There are other things you can continue to do on the Jamboard. If you go to the next screen, it creates another frame. So now we're on frame three of three. You can clear the frame. If you wanna set up a background, let's say you're doing more math equations and you need some graph paper, you can set that up. Actually handwriting for that one, graph paper for that one. And just a word regarding straight lines. Um, if you, I'll, I'll grab red as the example here, but if you hold the shift key down and draw, as you click here, the line will be straight as opposed to freehand drawing. So the shift key will enable you to draw a straight line of sorts. We'll do the same thing. Let's say we wanna create an X and a Y axis to plot some points on a graph. We can do that all here on Jamboard. If you wanna upload a file or a sticky note rather, you can click on it. Perhaps a teacher might use this for feedback. You might use it to ask a question. You can have different colors in the background if you choose to. You can change those colors if you want. And then a sticky note appears anywhere on the screen and you can move that around as you see fit. Um, again, the eraser tool will help you erase your annotations. So if you wanted to just casually erase, it doesn't look like you could change the size of the eraser, but you can erase nonetheless. And again, we've got a selector tool. You saw the sticky note tool. If you wanna add an image, in this case, you can do a Google image search or grab something from your computer. We're going to search for math equation order of operations and you can grab an example and put that on your page as well this is movable it's resizable looks like with the three dots you can also duplicate or delete the image that's pretty much it the student again would uh, complete the jam this is always going to be available to them they can return to jamboard.google.com and log in to retrieve their work in fact, if you go, if you click on the icon, it takes you back to the Jamboard homepage. Just like Google Docs, these are shareable. So the student will continue to have access to this after the fact if it's been shared with them. If you click on more actions, you can rename it. You can even download it as a PDF. So if you want a hard copy of it uh, to study from, you can also have that as well. Thanks for listening and I hope you found this useful.